Post IRL tabletop characters. Unsinkable Sam. The cat that miraculously survived three of the worst maritime disasters in World War II. Usually by the skin of his teeth and to the puzzlement of everyone involved. Gets aboard the Bismarck somehow during early World War II. Bismarck gets destroyed. Only 115 out of 2,100 men survived. Sam survives. Get taken aboard British ship. Ship torpedoed and sinked. 159 men killed instantly. Sam survives. Taken aboard a second British ship. Ship torpedoed and sinks. Only one man survives. Sam also survives. <sighs> Jesus. That's... Fuck. Fine clinging to a piece of wood. And very angry <laughs> but quite unharmed. Oh, poor Kelly. Retires and lives to a very old age in a naval retirement home on the coast. Oh, that's lovely. That's that is lovely. lovely, but he seems like a fucking omen to me. <laughs> yeah, he does seem like an omen. However, I don't think he is uh, an IRL character. I feel he is the... Familiar? He's a familiar to the unseen, maybe, Warlock, possibly. Ooh. What, do you have someone put a curse on you? I don't Ooh. know, definitely ill omens yeah. about you. General Butt Naked comes to mind. He's, yes. You know the worst thing? He's still alive. Yeah, he's still he's alive. Still, he, he just found God. Uh-huh. <laughs> Get away with all his war crimes. <laughs> Despite being a cannibal murder hobo with an army of underage transgender junkies, he's still alive and even has a YouTube channel. What he has a YouTube, YouTube channel? channel now? Okay. Oh, I'm going to look that shit if, up. If you guys want, I would definitely recommend check out Count Dankula's video on, on General Butt yep. but Naked. Vice, like the Vice... Vice documentary from like 2010 or something. Yeah, it was something like that. They also done him. They were very good. I'm actually currently working on a Ranger subclass of Butt Naked compatible with 5th edition. Based. Um, But that'll come in the future. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. But no, let's keep going with this. What the fuck? Guy was a literal orc. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Guy is a literal horse. Still. Yeah, he go really is. So he's, <laughs> he, 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 he just does all this mental stuff. The thing is, you, it only happens in Africa, that type of shit. Yeah. Because the problem is, they mix in like Christianity with like local witch doctor. Yeah. Um, which, like, spur- Rituals and stuff like that, and it's yeah. It's really bizarre stuff. Once described as the most evil man in the world. He actually has an interview and he talks about how before battle they would cut, they would tie a child to a post yeah. and they would cut Got open it. they would cut the child from the back yeah. and they would all get around and actually eat the heart while They'll it's pull still the heart from the back and yeah, eat it and while eat it while it's still, it's still pe- oh brutal stuff yeah and that was just like a that was that was like an average Tuesday for I him know. that's not like a oh well, yeah no this was a really bad that we did it's across the board it's dreadful yeah. stuff. Blay said in 2008 that he had killed at least 20,000 people and carried out regular human sacrifice and cannibalism of children. I would say it'd be more than that. The Kran elders appointed him, at age 11, as high priest, a position that would lead him to become the spiritual advisor to Liberian president Samuel Doe. Samuel Doe as well. He Absolute was mental. Doolally. Honestly, look, see, see Africa in like the 80s and 90s? Absolute mental. Like, it, it, honestly, there's like a Rwandan genocide every yeah. other week. It's really bad. Africa now. <laughs> it's yeah, well, Africa, it's kind of down back a yeah. little bit, but it's still not great, you know? The Kran tribe selects leaders based upon physical powers rather than birthright. The selection process takes place through an annual fight. Bly says he led his troops naked, except for sneakers and armed with guns or machetes. He believed that his nakedness was a source of protection from bullets. Um, they believed that because they would do all these rituals beforehand they believed that whenever they fought naked they the bullets couldn't see them they also there was a different group I don't believe it was general butt naked but it was mm. like general like Lambo or Mosquito or something yeah. like that they've all got they've these all really, got really weird, weird names. names but there was one and they all dress up as uh, women or girls oh yeah because they yes. it, it, they believed that it would confuse the bullets yeah so it, they would think like oh no we're not fighting another army that's it's like really, bit, like, it's yeah. really weird. It's really it's, weird. I don't get it, to be honest with you. Bly claimed to a South African star reporter that he met Satan regularly and talked to him, and that from the age of 11 to 25, he took part in monthly human sacrifices. See, that's one of the weird things as well when it comes to like African Christianity, mm-hmm. because they do mix it with a lot of their local beliefs. Yeah. This Satan is more of like a weird witch doctor yeah. of sorts, and it's really, it's really bizarre stuff. 
Blahi also purported that during this period he had magical powers that made him invisible and a special power to capture a town single-handedly, then call in his troops afterwards to clean up. Um, I, I don't think we can actually talk about what clean up actually means. Yeah. Definitely an interesting character. He is definitely my f- personal favourite African warrior. Definitely warriors. go and check him out. Definitely. Um, after this video, go ahead. Yeah, he, just he is definitely an IRL tabletop character. He's de- he's definitely a murder hobo oh, anyway. Yeah. Um, but look, just keep an eye out. We will be making that Ranger subclass very soon. I'm looking forward to it. Have him be able to, like, you know, once a day be able to summon child soldiers and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me, it's going to be beast. Joseph Beryl. This man lived the Call of Duty game. Transport almost shot down over Normandy. Separated from other paratroopers, still carried out demolition missions successfully. Captured by Germans, multiple escape attempts, almost killed by Gestapo for being a spy, escaped the Soviet lines on the Eastern Front, convinced female tank commander to let him fight alongside her unit, got wounded. General Zhukov visited him in the hospital, finally got to contact with American forces, Finds out he's been officially dead for a year. They had a funeral and everything. This is more outlandish than any World War II FPS I've ever played. Honestly, yeah. You, yeah. Could, you could make a good Call yeah, of Duty you game, could. I think. You that, fucking if could. I'll be honest with you. Why haven't they? Because oh, you know the It old... also sounds like a. Like a uh, is it. Like a Medal of Honor? Medal of Honor. I could. Well. You know, I could actually see this to a certain extent, especially. I, I can see this being like a Metal Gear Solid spin-off. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I really can see a Metal Gear Solid spin-off from this yeah. guy. This random and fairly poor backwater made the Turks squeal, while the rest of Christendom shivered in Cardus, and almost killed Mehmed II personally, except he chose the wrong tent. He was so notorious for his military success and his cruelty, even by the very high standards of the Turks for the latter that they put his severed head up in Constantinople to convince people that, yes, he was really dead. See, that's one of the interesting things about Vlad. Mm-hmm. Whenever I think of some human beings, like, you know, I, 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 okay, I'm going to use this guy as an example. Um, let's say Stalin or Hitler. Mm-hmm. You know, in the 20th century, they were incredibly brutal human beings. But see if you put them back in time a wee bit further to like yeah, the Middle like if Ages. Yeah, put him up against. They, they're pretty bog standard. Vlad the, or Genghis Khan or but, something. But or... the only reason that um, that they did do these things is because they were able to. Mm-hmm. And with uh, Vlad, he was actually able to, with his military, might be able to do these horrible, horrible things. Yeah. Same with Genghis Khan. Same with you know what I mean. Yeah. I feel like a lot of um, kings and rulers would have been a lot more brutal if only they had the chance, chance to. to be more brutal. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. What do you What do you guys think? Is that about crack, crack pop? No, I think it is. But mm. a medio Gillette, Olympic level horse riding, married his cousin. That's not beast. No, it's not beast. (laughs) Went to World War II in Africa, ordered the last horse charge in history against British tanks. His horse continued to die, had to change them mid-battle multiple times, known to the locals as the devil. When the war was ending, had to run away. To do so, pretended to be a blind and deaf man, kept calm even when the British were about to find him, took on fake identity as an Arab, knew the language and mannerisms, was found anyway and left to die in the desert survived saved by camel seller that even offered him his daughter refused why do they always offer daughters I know, they they always do. I know. refused faked being the brother of the seller to get official permission by the british to leave manages to escape by pretending to be mad in italy worked for the secret service for the king after the war studied political sciences became ambassador in cairo did some other stuff died of old age in 2010 aged 101. Why are Italians like this? Why are Italians like this? <laughs> he sounds like a really based NPC to run into. Yeah, he does. I, th- I think you could work with him. Mm-hmm. I love his... Uh, I, I honestly think you could really do a lot there. Especially, like, you know, being left for dead and all. Yeah. I, I, I find him interesting. I yeah. like him. I've never heard of this guy before. Neither but But, uh, no, pretty cool. Definitely fits the archetype for a generic D&D yeah. character, you know? Hey, guys. So are you looking to spice up your game night? Do you need some orcs to raid your camp? Do you need some elephids to suck out your brains? Do you need some undead to rise from the graves? What about a dragon to slap down in the table and fuck up your players with? Or if you prefer a frost giant or a manticore, we got him. 
it's a lot more fun than dropping rocks in your players' heads. Or maybe you just want short stacks, because we know you love them. (laughs) We have such an expansive range of fantasy options, and we're currently trying to expand into not 40k. (laughs) Also, if models isn't your thing, go check out our subclasses. There's loads of stuff there that you might find interesting. But go ahead and check it out. Links are all down below and let's get back into the video. Steve Mann, inventor. I wear a computer vision system and carry a letter from my family's physician, as well as documentation on this system when I travel. I have worn a computer vision system of some kind for 34 years and I am the inventor of the technology that I wear and use in my day-to-day life. On the evening of July 1st, 2012, my wife and children and I went to McDonald's at 140 Avenue Campus Elise, Paris, France. A McDonald's employee physically assaulted me. He angrily grabbed my glasses and tried to pull it off my head. I showed him the letter from my doctors and the documentation I had brought with me. He then brought me to two other persons. After all three of them reviewed this material, he angrily crumpled and ripped up the letter from my doctor and pushed me out the door onto the street. He sounds like a bit of a mental, if I'd be honest with you, this guy with these, like... (laughs) I don't get where the crazy the angry like, Frenchman comes from. He's like one of these inventors who, um, oh God, look at the glasses. I know, they're not the best looking things. No, he's like one of these inventors who like, you know, makes like the see-through toaster and thinks it's everything. <laughs> Honestly, I'm, I'm just happy he's got a wife and kids. Yeah. Because uh, he, he's looking at him. I'm shocked. <laughs> Get on you, mate. Get on you. I definitely, I do feel like for me personally, I'm more of a Terry E. Davis fan than this guy when it comes to like crazy modern day inventors. I, I wouldn't say, well, you could say Terry Davis is an inventor. If you guys don't know who he is, he essentially, well, what he believed, I suppose, and what he did were two different, very different things. <laughs> he believed that he created an operating system that could speak to God, essentially. Um, you can go and watch a lot of it. He, he did a lot of live streams on YouTube yeah. and he did scream a lot of profanities and he had a bit of a cult following. Yeah. Um, sadly, some people think that it was the CIA. More than likely, he jumped in front between himself from mental illness. Yeah. Very sad story, though. Very interesting. If you get the chance, Terry E. Davis. Check him out. James Duham. At the beginning of the Second World War, Duhan joined the Royal Canadian Artillery and was a member of the 14th Midland Field Battery, 2nd Canadian Infantry Division. He was commissioned as Lieutenant in the 14th Field Artillery Regiment of the 3rd Canadian Infantry Division. He was sent to England in 1940 for training. He first saw combat landing at Juno Beach on D-Day. What was he doing for four years? I know. Four years training in England? Hmm. Shooting two snipers, Duhan led his men to higher ground through a field of anti-tank mines where they took defensive positions for the night. Crossing between command posts at 11.30 at night, Duhan was hit by six rounds fired from a Bren gun by a nervous Canadian sentry. Four in his leg, one in his chest and one through his right middle finger. Ugh. The bullet to the chest was stopped by a silver cigarette case given to him by his brother. His right middle finger had to be amputated, something he would conceal on screen during most of his career as an actor. He's an actor? What? Duhan graduated from Air Observation Pilot Course 40 with 11 other Canadian artillery officers and flew Taylor Craft Oyster Mark V aircraft for 666 AOP Squadron. RCAF as a Royal Canadian Artillery Officer in support of 1st Army Group Royal Canadian Artillery. All three Canadian AOP RCAF squadrons were manned by artillery officer pilots and accompanied by non-commissioned RCA and RCAF personnel serving as observers. Although he was never actually a member of the Royal Canadian Air Force, Duhan was once labelled the craziest pilot in the Canadian Air Force. In the late spring of 1945, on Salisbury Plain north of RAF Andover, He slalomed the plane between telegraph poles to prove it could be done, earning himself a serious reprimand. Various accounts cite the plane as a hurricane or a jet trainer. However, it was a Mark IV oyster. Honestly, there's a lot of people from World War II you could use. Easy one that I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with would be like MacArthur, because he was so eccentric. Like, even his wee hat that he wears, and even whenever he's off in the Pacific, he even 
almost goes native, or at least that's what they described him as. Like, you know, apparently he was, like, really big into wearing, like, komodos and stuff. So maybe he was, like, the OG weeb. <laughs> but he was actually really cool at the same time. There's a lot of really interesting people from World War II. I think we already spoke about it as well. Zukov as well. He was mm-hmm. a commander. Well, he was main general pretty much for the Red Army. However, what happened to him was he was involved with Stalin's purges in, like, the 20s and 30s. Um, he had all of his teeth pulled out, fingers pulled out, all that type of stuff. He, he was actually, he had been in a gulag for like almost 10 years at this mm-hmm. point. And then they like, no, we actually need the decent commanders because <laughs> Russia was getting their balls kicked in so hard, you know. And they're like, right, okay, we don't really like these people. Officially, they are, you know, political prisoners. But yeah. we need anyone that's actually fucking decent, so come on. But yeah, silver teeth, no fingers, really bizarre fellas. Um... Who would else would there be from World War Two? Mad Jack Churchill. Churchill as well in general. Churchill, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, Churchill, just can you stop drinking whiskey every fucking morning? I know. Please, Five Churchill. minutes. Churchill, can you not be drunk? Winston! <laughs> you know, there's so many great characters though from World War Two that uh, I think you could do a really good campaign. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I think that's where we're going to end it. The only people I feel like we need to talk about would be like um, cult leaders, so like Dave Clash, Paul Pot, Paul Pot would be a good one. Honestly, be- pretty much any dictator as well. All the wacky ones. All the wa- <laughs> you <know>? wacky. <laughs> they okay. are wacky. Like you know, let's be a serious. Like you know, okay, you could say what what was Hitler's made Goebbels was it? Yeah. Yeah. Like okay, let's be serious. That boy had autism. <laughs> Yeah. Let's be well, serious. Yeah, like 100%. you know, he was he was definitely on the wacky spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from some of his views, like honestly, it's really bizarre stuff. But no, I think like Alistair Crowley, Dave Koresh, Siri, and Oliver Cromwell. Oh yeah, he would be he would be a he good be one. Good. Yeah, and um, honestly, see most great men throughout human history, they're all really horrible human beings, but have also had incredible lives, and uh-huh. I feel like. Almost There's anyone. a reason why we're still telling their stories. Yeah, I you know, I'll, even if they were quote unquote bad men in history or if they had they were evil or evil whatever. Or, whatever. or they don't hold up to today's standards, standards. of morality. We still talk about them, we still talk about their, their achievements, achievements what their they've likes done, and what they've done, you know. Um, how it affects the world today. Yeah. You know, who who would you go for? Oh, Ernest Hemingway, he'd be a great mm, one. Yes, Ernest he Hemingway, he's a one. really interesting he would be a um, one. Austria, you know, I'm going to put it out here right now. Tolkien, he would make an amazing bard. Tolkien would have... Oh, yes! He could, Fuck he, yeah! He could make Tolkien as a bard. You know, him in World War One. you could do an awful lot. And he um, tells his stories and uh, he could say... Oh, that would be so good! You know, I, who, who other one? I don't know. Would C.S. Lewis be any good? C.S. Lewis could, was in the war. No, I, I, he, I, um, he was uh, He was born just out. He was like oh, one was of those he? ones. He's like that age group where... Slightly uh, too young for World War One, and too, so, too World old for World War Two. Yeah. You know. What about you guys? It, any like anybody from like the past? You, that you all, think a, about? a lot of knights. What was you guy? You know, pretty much anyone in any kind of dunk video ever made. <laughs> 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 That's how about yeah. that? You know, any Mad Lads video. Any Mad Lads video. On, well, oh, except for pur- 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 Rocky. Pur- well, oh, oh, well, Purple Rocky. Oh, Purple Actually, I, I, you know, I'm actually I forgot to say that I'm working on the subclass, the Barbarian subclass, Purple, purple Rocky. <laughs> so I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much. I've already spoken about them. Well, except for the pur- Purple Rocky. Show us your muscles. The, <laughs> Catman or the Ratman, whoever it is. Oh, the Catman of Greenock. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just no, that's just a Scottish furry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know who would make another great one? If any of you guys have seen the movie Charles Bronson. Oh fuck! I love yeah. Bronson. I love Bronson. Bronson so much. would be a great one. Um, a lot of gangsters. You could use like Al Capone or Cray the Great Twins. Twins. Honestly, there's so much you could do with a lot, and I. Personally, yeah. one of one of the last characters I played was Ian Paisley, the Paladin. Mm-hmm. Which, um, if you're not from Northern Ireland, you you more you, likely you probably, you know. probably don't know who Ian Paisley is. But he's a very like hellfire and brimstone, oh, yeah. old worldly preacher type. Yeah. Um, he actually ended up at, like somewhat personal power multi of sorts. Really bizarre fella. Yeah, if you're interested, he in, like he was preaching. Um, like proper hellfire through Protestantism. 
but he made his own. He was almost Paisleyites. People called them the Paisleyites. Yeah, he had like a cult of personality. Yeah, yeah. he's really a fascinating fella. And if you're interested, he shouted at in, my dad whenever my dad was fifteen. My dad <laughs> shit himself. <laughs> I, I believe that. He's he also you should hear his voice. So he's got such a commanding presence. Never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never. Also, he watches stuff. But like, I feel like if we don't stop now, we're just gonna. We're keep just gonna talking. keep going. But uh, you write down below who you would <laughs> like to see, like uh, an know like an IRL. Who could you tabletop. base a character like a, if you were to copy a person pet from history and leave or the present? Them? Yeah, you could present. You could it doesn't do. have to be from the history. Yeah, well, you know, people get a bit. People can get very offended whenever you use people I know. that are alive exactly. Today. But look, you know, write it down if you find one. Yeah, go for it. Check it out. Um, I really enjoyed this. It was just nice to not do a Kimber video. Yeah. For like, thank God. Once, <laughs> but like we've spoken long enough about this. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was something a wee bit different. Yeah, I really check liked out the it. links. Check out all the models. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. <laughs>